Lotus is a play for young people, kind of um, eight plus. Um, it's about three girls in their final year of primary school who, for different reasons, are inspired to to activism, to um, to make a change in the local community, and then they are inspired by each other, and the play culminates in a a protest or a coming together of their local community to to sort of demand and inspire change. That's in terms of climate, the climate emergency, but also in terms of kind of anti-racism and in, in terms of gender equality. I used to be a teacher, but I'm also a mother of three children. And, and I noticed, especially kind of when conversations around the pandemic, there were so many sort of um, calls to action, whether it was Black Lives Matter, you know, the climate emergency. And, and in conversations with my children, there seemed to be a sense that there was nothing they could do. And so I think that was my starting point. And then I talked to a lot of activists who've spent their lifetime um, campaigning and working towards um, a better world, working towards change. And I spoke to them about how they sustain that change. And one of the things that was the sort of common thread was that actually it is in the small actions, it's in the small wins that helps you sustain. So I think I wanted, by things that happen in their lives, inspire to do something. And that maybe they don't win completely, but they have a small win. They have something hopeful about that. And I wanted, I suppose, to create a play for my children and for people like my children who needed to, to feel hopeful and that they had agency, there was something they can do. Well, I was really lucky to be um, picked up by Imaginate. So Imaginate is a Scottish-based company that support children's theatre and they also run Edinburgh International Children's Theatre. So I wrote the play initially as a sort of um, work in progress with Imaginate and then Imaginate then went forward um, with, with partners with Northern Stage and Fuel and um, National Theatre Scotland to make it into a full production. And then Natalie Ibu came on board as director and so then we sort of took the play, which was initially, because of the pandemic, I'd sort of envisioned it almost like a radio play, so there was these sort of intertwining monologues. So there was a real discussion when we were bringing it to the stage about how we could create something that felt more um, vital in the sense that it felt there was more action. So there was some work on that, kind of taking it into this version. And then also what Natalie, one of the things that Natalie picked up was that actually this play is, about, is quite physical in the sense that these girls run and they climb trees and they, 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 they ride their bikes. And so it felt that there was something powerful to say about how little girls are often portrayed as being, as being not physically active. And actually that's such a part of their lives. And so we wanted to sort of do that. And I think Natalie was really committed to bringing that alive. And I strongly believe there's always something you can do. And I think that change happens within our kind of local communities or for children within their schools. And there's always something you can do. So I wanted to leave that as a sort of kind of final moment in the play that there's something that you can do. You know, it's a, it's, there's a power in coming together and there's a power in community. It's all there on the page, but I think what we did developing into production was we did a lot of like intercut, finding out the moments where the monologues, I mean, the monologues were always intercut, cutting a little bit, but it was about doing that even more. So finding those moments where we could sort of, they could come across each other. Um, so there was a little bit of that in the development of it and looking at where the possibility for kind of physicality. And um, yeah, so I think in terms of like the words on the page, they're all, I think really there's not much that's not there from from earlier drafts. But I think what it was, was looking at where can we, where can we cut in? Where can another person cut in a bit more? And where, where was the dynamism in that? So where was the most exciting place for them to cut in with each other? Um, and when could they just stretch out? And like, you know, there's, I think in, in the second half of the play, Chloe really gets to stretch out. And that was really important because Chloe was the more of the reserved thing. So she had to gain the confidence to suddenly be able. So all of these little things that we sort of played with, so we were kind of moving the script around a lot. And there's a lot of that in discussion with Natalie. And then when we got the actors in the room was then also looking at, oh, actually there's, there's a need here for more or for less. Or, in the initial three monologues, you heard them kind of intercut. And then as the play went on, you started to realise that they were at the same school and that the people were talking about were the same people. And that I wanted it to feel like a tag team. So so it was that, you know, one person does their talk and then they, they inspire this. And, and just because I think I was interested in that ripple effect. 
that sometimes we don't aware of the things we do, that when we are brave, that we actually make other people brave. And so I, want, I was really struck by that idea about if you show courage, if you do the brave thing, the ripple effect is that somebody else feels that there's space for them to be brave. So I wanted that idea. So there were like moments, but I also really liked that sort of reveal of them going, ooh, you know, and so there was some of that um, kind of, so that was always in it right from the beginning. And if anything, we've lost, we lost a little bit of it in the way we did it. But actually, you know, like, I think some of that was because of the kind of necessity to, to give it, to kind of cut in at different areas. We sort of, because it actually happened in the original play much later on that you started to go, oh, wait a minute, that's all well, the granny they're talking about is Alice's granny and this, oh, right, okay, wait a minute, I see. So I quite like that jigsaw puzzle of it. And, and, the, and the rich language and the kind of, and I suppose that comes from just spending years and years reading to my kids and realising the more poetic, like the more the stories I read that were full of imagery, the more I could spellbound them. So there was some of that wanting to sort of create a sort of magic and a, and a spell so that you can talk about these kind of difficult things, but in a way that feels like you've really drawn them in and there's a rhythm to it. I mean, you know, I'm also a poet and that's like a different experience because you're very much sort of, you know, you, you write the poem, you get a little bit of editing. I mean, obviously it's editing, but you're sort of in charge of it until it kind of, it's quite, it's quite, you're quite, a, it's quite a solo process. So there is something for me when I'm writing plays, it's quite exciting because usually I'm just kind of on my own. So I kind of enjoy all this sort of input and, you know, and, and not, I mean, you know, when you, there's always, it's always never completely easy because you just want to go, oh, well done, that's great. That's your one. <laughs> so like, off you go. But actually, I think, I think when you're a playwright and your relationship with the director is very much about, um, it's about a gift. It's like, I've done this and I give it to you and you have to allow them to come in with their creativity and what they want to do. And I think you have to be careful not to get in the way of that. So it's a, it's a real trust. And I think the same thing where a director then gives that to the actors. You know, it's a, and then when the actors give it to the audience, so there's all this process of just giving it away a little bit at a time. So I think that's part of the thing. And I think the, you know, being collaborative and listening to other people's opinions, knowing that you have to hold on to something so being careful about how much you sort of change, but at the same time knowing that I think I was very lucky that everyone got in, involved in this very quickly and were very excited about it. So, you know, you can let go of some of your anxiety about whether it's liked or not, because you know that these people have committed to it. And now it's just about, you know, everyone wanting to make it the best it can be. So it's really wonderful. It's wonderful having um, sort of letting it go a bit and seeing what other people want to bring to it. I was writing it imagining kind of P6, P7, so that I was thinking about these these kids. So I kind of didn't, I suppose my biggest thing is I don't want to patronise them because I know my kids and they're, you know, I think sometimes we're adults and we look back at like 11, 10 year olds, we think of them as very, very little, but actually they're, they're pretty on it. And so I wanted to create something where I was actually talking to them and allowing them to talk in their kind of grown up way. But the, the beautiful thing at that, that age where they're kind of, Sometimes they're just so incredibly mature, but at the same time they'll be they'll be telling these incredibly wise, mature things, but they'll be hanging off the side of a of a, you know, play, a play frame when or a climbing frame when they're telling you it. So it was something about keeping that joy of being young alongside these kind of wise heads, and and actually in that time when they first start to really meet the world and meet the world sometimes, and it can be quite painful realizing the world isn't quite as fair as they thought or as as just as they thought. So it was about that moment when you're writing children, then it's about remembering back through those moments and not patronizing, but at the same time remembering that kind of the youthfulness and the joyfulness of, of, of that age and the way in which they talk. And I spent a long time listening to the way, the rhythm of the way kids talk. Um, so there was stuff of that. And it was also, it was really lovely about, you know, P6, P7, at least around my kids, they hadn't quite, they weren't quite sucked into to social media yet. So they were, you still had the freedom for them not to be on their phone to each other and having to actually see each other in the real world. So that was quite exciting. And I think actually, if anything, it's, it's harder because they're much more um, discerning audience and in some ways, like they're not going to just take it read what they're seeing is good. You've got to really win them over. So um, when we were in rehearsal, We'd bought the, the, the primary school from across the road in one day to in kind of quite early on the rehearsals to see how they were reacting and where we could like what was not landing. And yeah, we were definitely trying our best to sort of make sure that the play was going to speak to the audience it was intended for. I mean, this feels like a very politically charged moment. There is there's so much division and I think there's 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 so much that makes us feel that we can't change anything and feel hopeless. 
whether that is facing up to what the climate emergency and the changes and the things that will happen as a result of that, whether that is around um, you know, the kind of rise of the far right and feeling that there's more racism that's happening now than, than ever before, I think, in some ways. In some ways, I think we have moved forward. But when you look at the way refugees are spoken about, you know, boats, not people. I mean, I think there's, there's a moment where a lot of people feel that, um, that there's no space for their voice and that, that it's very difficult to find agency and it's very difficult to create change. So, yeah, I think it feels very much belongs to this moment. Um, and it belongs also, I suppose, to a moment... You know, within COVID, there was, there was, I think, that what we started to realise when we, like I live in a small town, is we realised how much we rely on each other, how much we need our neighbours. And so there is something there about finding strength in your community um, and, and kind of intergenerationally through, through you know, there's, there's, a very, there's kind of two important grandmothers in this play as well. So I think it feels like it does really belong to this moment. It's so much part of the conversations that people are having. And so it was a response to that and it was a response to this kind of, I think sometimes this feeling of overwhelm, that there's just almost too much to cope with. You know, there's so much that, that needs to be changed. And I think that we can sometimes retreat and just say, I can't do anything, give up. So there was also something about that. I think the theme is activism. It's about what we can do, that we can always do something. It's about how we sustain our activism. And I suppose the biggest theme of this play is about hope and finding hope in community and finding hope in each other and being inspired by each other and about friendship. Because I think what the thing was is finding these three girls. So once they started speaking to me, it was hard not to sort of want to take them to a hopeful place, if that makes sense. And I think I think a lot of it was about speaking to activists who've been being activists for 20, 30 years and like asking them, how do you sustain it? How do you keep going? And realizing actually they're the most incredibly hopeful people. And actually there's something about that hope, I suppose hope is a, a doing word, you know, like it's a, it's not, we think it's a passive thing, but it's actually about doing something. And so I think I wanted to give that sense of hope and nail that down by actually getting them to do something, to be, to, to, to attempt to make change, whether that's achieved or not, we'll never know. But the fact that that, that was the hopeful thing is that they, they tried and they supported each other. I think it was nailing it down. I think it was about really discovering these three girls and the writing and then realizing this is what they wanted to do. I think it's a provocation. So I think for me, you know, some of the responses have been incredible. And I remember those being told that because I would get a little, yeah, one of the directors, this director used to just like hang about outside and listen to people as they went past. And she heard, overheard a little girl saying, I'm going to go and save that tree, mum. I think it was one grandmother that came out and just said, I'm a champion granny, that's me. So there's all these lovely little moments. But I think that's what I wanted. I wanted people to kind of take the play you know, the gift of the play forward to kind of say, well, actually, there's something, what can I do? And I think that was my hope, that people would come out and go, right, I could do something, I could do that, or I could do something, or what, what in my community can I change? Actually, I think as well, there's something about feeling less alone, that I think when we're little and we're dealing with things, you know, like Chloe's de dealing with her parents who are divorced, Jade's dealing with, with racism, and Alice is dealing with sort of that first realisation that that as a girl, the world's going to be slightly different from her than the boys. And I think I wanted also to have that thing about feeling less alone, because sometimes we, we think, oh, I think, especially when we're young, we think that things we're going through are just about us. And then what that joy about going, oh, actually, this isn't about me. This is about the systems I live in, or this is about the, the way society is designed. And, and I think it was a, there was something about feeling less alone and being able to sort of hand some of that back and go actually this is, this, isn't, this is not my fault or this is not because of me this is because of the way the world's structured but also I think I was that little girl in P7 who was really political and was really aware of stuff in the world and I just wanted to I think I just wanted to me not to be alone so I think I created three girls who were like this would have been the friendship I wanted when I was in you know P7 I wanted that I wanted to feel like there was other people that felt the same way as me so I think I was sort of writing it you know, not necessarily in a kind of really obviously political or making any statement about stories about girls, but just like, well, these are the girls that I know, but also these are the girls I wanted to know when I was in P7. So there was a little bit of that. But like my daughter said, why can't we have stories where the main character is a girl? Why does that mean that it's, it's not exclusive? It's just, you know, so yeah. <laughs>